We're live. Okay, we're live. Sergeants, will you begin your recordings? Cloud is up. Back up is rolling. Thank you, Sergeant Kolaski. You may begin the opening. Good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Health. At this time, would council staff please turn on their video? Please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. I am Mark Levine, Chair of the City Council's Committee on Health. Today, we're holding an important vote on two pieces of legislation. The first is intro 1748A, sponsored by Councilmember Drum, which will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct a public information and outreach campaign regarding the provision of medically unnecessary treatments and interventions performed on individuals born with intersex traits or variations in sex characteristics. As part of this campaign, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene will create and distribute educational materials and resources for parents and guardians of individuals born with intersex traits or variations in sex characteristics, create resources for medical practitioners, and identify community outreach partners and stakeholders. Children born with variations in their sex characteristics are often subjected to, quote, normalizing surgeries that are irreversible, risky, and medically unnecessary. Such procedures can cause permanent infertility, pain, incontinence, loss of sexual sensation, and lifelong mental suffering, including depression. The surgeries are often performed when the child is too young to consent. Despite their risk and lack of medical necessity, these surgeries continue today, including in New York City. This bill will help promote education and awareness of the potential risks and harmfulness of these medically unnecessary treatments and interventions. We will also be voting today on intro 1524A, sponsored by Councilmember Kalos. This bill bans the use of any non-biological pesticide, such as glyphosate, on any playground, park, and any other property under the jurisdiction of the, park, of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Pesticides can pose significant risks to humans, animals, and the environment if not properly used and regulated. The legislation would expand the list of prohibited pesticides to also include pesticides classified as a human carcinogen by the Office of Pesticide, of Pesticide Programs of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Pesti pesticides classified by the California Office of Environmental Hazard Association as a development toxin and pesticides containing active ingredients listed as carcinogenic by the International Agency for Research on Cancer of the World Health Organization. This bill is critical to, protect, to protecting all New Yorkers, but particularly our children. I wanna thank my colleagues from the Health Committee for being here today and the staff of the Health Committee, Council Sara Liss and Harbani Hahuja, Policy Analyst Emily Balkin, and Finance Analyst Lauren Hunt for their work on this legislation and in preparing for this hearing. And I do want to offer a chance for our bill sponsors to say a few words. Uh, Council Member Drum, are you with us? Would you like to speak? Okay, let's see if Council Member Kalos is with us. Would you like to speak? Thank you. Uh, today is Earth Day. Earth Day is the day that we will ban toxic pesticides from our parks. We will stop poisoning our children. We will stop poisoning our workers. We will stop poisoning Mother Earth. We will stop choosing cancer over weeds. I would take weeds any day over cancer. And I have to admit, I love dandelions. I love to blow their seeds everywhere. I love sharing that with my daughter as we picked everyone we could find in Central Park and blew the seeds everywhere. She watched in amazement, uh, even confusing them with bubbles. If this isn't already clear, uh, this is personal for me. And countless families like mine who went through this pandemic in cramped one bedroom apartments that weren't designed for shelter in place and who relied on our parks as a refuge. But with a toddler who touches everything, puts her hands in her mouth, the parks were scary knowing just how much pesticides they were spraying everywhere. When you think 
pesticides, people think lawns. And that's because Roundup is always advertised with a lawn. I don't think I've seen a Roundup ad with a woman. It's always a man. And it's always them spraying down their lawn. And thanks to the work of the Black Institute, we learned that pesticides are being sprayed in communities of color at a greater rate than anywhere else in our city. In parks that don't have lawns, but have blacktops, where kids are playing sports like basketball, and they're touching the court, and their hands are touching the ball, which is touching the court. And you're sitting down, not thinking that they'd have the temerity to be spraying pesticides all over the court, because God forbid there be a small weed that props up through a crack in the court. And so we learned that this wasn't only an issue of poisoning our children and our workers, but an environmental justice issue. This bill will prohibit city agencies from applying to any property owned or leased by the city any chemically based pesticides with very limited exceptions. This legislation will put New York City at the forefront nationally of addressing this important, important issue. I want to acknowledge some folks who have worked for years to make today possible. The fight began in 2005 with the passing of Local Law 37 by our colleague, once again, Council Member James Gennaro, which banned toxic pesticides used on city land and leased land. That law banned toxic pesticide use on city land and leased land. Unfortunately, it turns out that the same, some of those pesticides known to be hazardous, including glyphosate, were not captured by the law. In 2015, a group of precocious kindergarten students at PS290 brought this issue to my attention. They sang, and you can watch the videos online from the hearing, they sang, ban toxic pesticides, use only nature's pesticides. And they repeated it, and they concluded with, pass a law. I introduced the legislation banning the use of these toxic pesticides, including Roundup and glyphosate, in all of New York City parks and open spaces on the heels of the World Health Organization declaring glyphosate a probable carcinogen. I'd like to thank those students and their teacher Paula Raghavan for their courage and endless advocacy. If you haven't passed the law by middle school, you might be an underachiever in my district. I also want to thank Bertha Lewis and the Black Institute for their thorough reporting, analysis, and advocacy for communities of color, for environmental justice on this issue, and so many others. Jay Feldman from Beyond Pesticides, who provided us with the expertise and helped us guide us through the science behind this issue. I also like to thank Doug and Patty Wood of Grassroots Environmental Education who helped get this bill. The necessary co-sponsors that have been stalwart advocates on many environmental issues. This bill has a veto proof majority because of advocates like them. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank Speaker Johnson for his leadership on this and commitment to pass this legislation. Uh, going back to the previous session to today, uh, if he wasn't speaker, I don't think this would ever be passing. Uh, thank you to everyone involved, and uh, I urge you to vote yes for our environment, for our children, for all of us. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. And I think now we'll call the committee vote. Uh, I'll ask our committee counsel, Billy Martin, to start the roll. Thank you. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on health, Introdu proposed introductions 1524A and 1748A. Both items are coupled. Chair Levine. I vote aye. Thank you. Baron. I vote aye. And Priest Samuel. I vote aye. Holden. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Dharma Diaz. I, I believe you're, you're muted, Councilmember Diaz. I said aye. Thank you. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you, Billy. And uh, I think we'll hold the vote open for just a few more minutes. Thank you all for participating.
And Chair, we've been joined by Councilmember Drum, who I believe will be making an opening now. Wonderful. Thank you, Councilmember. Please, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much, Chair Levine, uh, for holding the vote open. I was on a um, on a on a, a press conference with the mayor, so I appreciate giving me the opportunity to make this statement. First, as my time in the council winds down, I want to place the legis I want to place the legislation you or we are voting on today in context. As chair of the LGBT caucus, I've been so happy to have worked with you, my colleagues, uh, to make New York City as open and as affirming as possible. This council especially has helped the LGBTQIA plus rights movement move forward from Speaker Johnson's efforts to update gender designation options on birth certificates to intro 1748's groundbreaking advance for the intersex community. I am proud to say that New York City has become a leader that other cities and states look to on LGBTQIA plus policy. As for the legislation, the committee is considering today, it comes down to this for me. We cannot as a movement or as a society for that matter, say that we respect the right to bodily integrity and the foundational concept of consent, yet ignore the injustices perpetrated by much of the medical establishment against our intersex siblings. Intro 1748 does not make any decisions for anyone. It simply aims to share accurate information about intersex traits and variations in sex characteristics. It is significant that this legislation specifically requires the Department of Health and Mental Health to include the input of the intersex community. After the compelling testimony from last October's hearing, I felt it necessary to include these voices in the bill. I want to recognize Chair Levine for always making sure LGBTQIA health issues are on your agenda. You have been a fantastic leader on this, Chair Levine, and I am most grateful to you. Former Chair of the Committee on Women and Gender Equality, Helen Rosenthal, also deserves recognition. Her incisive questions during the hearing helped our colleagues and the public understand what this is about. As always, I am grateful to the central staff for their work, Sarah Ginsburg, Harbania Ahuja, Sarah Liss, Emily Balkin, and Brenda McKinney. Uh, finally, thanks to the advocates whose work paved the way, especially Cecilia Gentili, Scott, Scout Silverstein, Alice, Alice Dare Idelson, and everyone at Interact. My hope is that our efforts today will soon lead to full equality and respect across this country for individuals with intersex traits or variations in sex characteristics. Again, thank you, Chair Levine, for your leadership on this, and I appreciate you allowing me uh, to speak on this issue. Thank you, Chair Drum, for your relentless activism on behalf of this critical community in New York City. You've done so much to elevate this issue and to push this legislation forward. And I'm absolutely grateful for your leadership on this. Congratulations. And uh, I think I'll ask our committee council whether we can wrap up now or whether we are going to. I, I believe uh, we're gonna be holding the vote open for just another few moments. Wonderful, okay, thank you so much. Chair Levine, we've been joined by council member Eugene. Wonderful. Welcome, Councilmember Eugene, Dr. Eugene. And uh, Bill, if you'd like to uh, register the vote. Sure. Uh, Councilmember Eugene, introdu proposed introductions 1524A and 1748A. If you'd like to vote now, sir. Uh, you're, you're muted, Councilmember. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you so vote very much. Currently now at seven in the affirmative. There's still one more member outstanding, Mr. Chair. Okay, we'll hold it open for a few more minutes. Thank you.
Chair Levine, we've been joined by Council Member Brooks Powers. Wonderful, and welcome to our newest Health Committee member, Council Member Brooks Powers. We're happy to have you. And Bill, if you could please call the vote. Sure. Proposed introductions 1524A and 1748A. Council Member Brooks Powers. Um, yes, sorry about being late. I vote aye. Thank you. Final vote on the two items are now eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And this concludes our health committee hearing. Thank you, everybody.